with millions of people in the UK considered underemployed, Labor Exchange co-founder Jonathan Key says matching ad hoc employees with work they want to do and employers who need them right away can help create sustainable career paths, paths that also happen to pay a living wage. Thus, an anomaly in startup land, a trade union-backed online marketplace. You're listening to Matchmakers with Karen Webster. Jonathan, thanks so much for joining me today. Excited to have a conversation with you about your gig platform that brings workers and employers together in the UK. So thanks for making the time. Pleasure. Pleased to join you. So, so Jonathan, we've talked to many, many platforms that bring supply and demand together different for different reasons, different types of buyers and suppliers. But you have a bit of a different approach to your platform, which is trying to fill the need for businesses that have, uh, have, have the demand for hourly workers, and your platform provides a steady supply of them. Tell us what makes what you're doing so different. Yeah, we've taken the approach of trying to turn the entire market on its head, basically. Um, uh, you tr- anything to do with work traditionally focuses on a business, and it will start with a business, and when the business has a need, it will try to match um, that with a worker. Um, from our personal and lived experience, uh, we, we knew in the UK there were millions and millions of people who are excluded from the labour markets, and these people... Uh, are excluded because they can only work certain hours each week. Now, I'll I'll give you an example of what what I mean by that. Take someone who works in a supermarket. Um, Their rotor goes up Saturday night the following week. Now, if they're on a 15-hour week contract and their rotor changes weekly, um, basically they can't get another job to fit around 15 hours job. So what tends to happen is that they, they, they don't use that and they go on some sort of benefits from the government, um, hmm. but they desperately want more work. And the same can be said for parents and carers. So if you've got children to look after, one week to the next, your availability on an hour by hour basis changes. So you can only work certain days. Now, these people, because you can't make a lot of money from them because they only want to work a few hours each week, mm-hmm. are generally excluded by most platforms and most recruiters. So we've made a platform where an individual can select the upcoming week, the exact hours they want to work, their their skills, and they do a very short video of themselves. And what we then do is combine that, combine all the hours in the local area together, and that kind of gives you a 24-7 shift coverage that a business can then tap into. That's interesting. So, so this is um, this is aggregating all of the spare capacity of workers, and uses that spare capacity. It may be ten workers, twenty workers, uh, five workers for businesses that have the need to fill in empty hours in their day with workers who have those skills. That that is very interesting. Completely. You, you've hit the nail on the head. Um, and it actually fills two functions for a business. So ask any business owner whether they can get someone for two hours right. Wednesday morning, and they'd say, that's impossible. Right. There's no agency in the world that will do that. There's no platform. Our platform can do that. Equally, if you've got a large business, you suck the local labour supply so dry. So if you employ more than 400 people in a locality, Basically, basically, you've stretched the local labour supply. And what we've shown is we can bring up to four to ten times the standard number of people onto the labour market by reaching out to these people who are excluded. So, Jonathan, who are, who are the businesses that use your platform? Give us, give us some use cases and how you've brought that demand and supply together. Um, we're very lucky. So one of the reasons why our model works so well is the supply side is very, very patient. 
<laughs> so if you're not currently working on a Tuesday and we don't find you work on a Tuesday, you've lost absolutely nothing. Right. But when the work does come to you, it fits exactly around you. So the individuals who sign up for work on our platform aren't chomping at the bit for the work because they're not currently doing anything with their time. Right. But when it does come up, they're super reliable because normally they're already working. So they've already got that work ethic. So it's a very good supply side. So we, we always start with the supply side in an area. And we say to people, listen, you, you may not get anything for a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, but when it does come, it fits around you. And not just that, because our platform's entirely automated. Mm -hmm. We've removed all the costs. So the individual in the UK gets paid more than any other platform or any other type of recruitment because we take less. We, the business pays less, the individual gets more, and we take less. That's how it works. Mm. Um, so a really good example. Companies, cleaning companies, have between a 20 and 30% no turn up ratio. Um, yep. I'm talking about commercial cleaning companies, yep. either through sickness or something happening or holidays. Um, and they find it virtually impossible to cover those gaps. Right. Um, it's quite low skilled work, but they need someone who's dedicated, who wants to turn up, and who will turn up for two hours on a Friday night to clean an office. Mm -hmm. They are, you know, they, they can't find those people. And if they do find those people, they'll spend between 200 and £1,000 pounds finding them mm -hmm. and signing them up for some ad hoc usage mm -hmm. where they can click on our platform and within we quickly click staff. Within three clicks, they can book a member of staff. Um, so that, that's a really good example. We're about to go live with five uh, FTSE 250 companies wow. um, who experience that mass problem that we're talking about where they've exhausted the local labour supply. And we're just about to sign up three uh, UK local councils with regards to the care industry. So in the UK, the UK is short of 150,000 care staff um, looking after people in your own home. So the concept is my mum will be looked after by her next door neighbour when her kids are at school for three or four hours. She literally just pops next door and she can pay for it through the platform. So we're making work more local, more relevant um, and more convenient for people. How much notice do do the workers who are signed up to be part of your platform get for their gigs? Because it sounds like some of these these things might be a little bit last minute. Your cleaning um, company example comes to mind. You don't know if someone's calling out sick, perhaps until you know yes. a couple of hours before. So so describe that that dynamic a little bit. So. Everyone else will put a job out for someone, ask them, and then they'll say whether they can do the job. Our platform, the individual has already confirmed they can do the job because they change their availability I on see. a week-by-week -week basis. I see. So we know for a fact. So what happens is the platform reaches out to three people for any one job at once, and we say the first one to come back gets it. And thus far, we've got a 99% uptake ratio from reaching out to those three people because they've already said this work fits for me and the system will only contact the people who can work on that time. Wow. But but that assumes that they're also, I mean, I, I, I understand the hyper-local nature of what you're doing, uh, but that also assumes that they can get there in the time required so that they are local to the, to the need. And do you take that into consideration with your matching algorithm and what and how people are, are putting their availability into the system? Yeah, very much so. So people select the distance they I wish see. to travel. Yep. So if someone's put they only want to travel half a mile, then the chances are the system's not going to call them out for that particular piece of work. Um, in general, people want to travel between one and two miles. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we, we've sold it as a very local solution. And because there are so, so, so many people who want to work like this, because mm -hmm. no one else caters for them, in any given area, there's always a uh, ample supply of people. Yeah, if that makes sense. So, so, so what is the union connection that you have? Explain that. That's really important. So, I one of the reasons, well, the single reason I, I started Labour Exchange is I actually witnessed firsthand. Um, how devastating underemployment is. I was managing a national supermarket chain 
which is why I gave that example. And it was their policy that everyone was on a 15-hour week contract. Um, and you can see the devastation that it causes someone's life. So I wanted to make sure that this platform is a win-win. The, the only way it can be a win-win is it has to work for businesses because there'll be no jobs for workers, mm -hmm. but it has to work for the worker as well. Mm -hmm. So we, I, <laughs> we wrote to every trade union in Great Britain and said, we want to do this because there's a problem and we want to fix it in the right way. And 46 trade unions wrote back and called me evil, some of them <laughs> using swear words. Um, and one trade union actually said, you're right. Well, we know for a fact there are millions of people who can't afford to eat because they can't work enough hours. Wow. Um, and if you can use technology to increase their hourly rate, which we have done, so it, they don't get paid the minimum wage, they get paid the real living wage, and I don't know if you know about that in the UK, but that's a much higher hourly yeah. rate than the minimum. Right. But the business doesn't pay a penny more than they would to an agency. So the business wins because they actually pay less, they get good staff, but the individual wins, they get paid more. So it's a genuine win-win. And because of that, because of our approach, we're, we're actually endorsed that our partner is the is a community trade union. Mm -hmm. So when someone joins up, the um, through our partnership, they're offered support and guidance. Um, so it, it, it's our early phase, but we want to build a whole range of support for workers on the platform um, from uh, yeah from every aspect of their life. So basically, turning it into more like a LinkedIn for blue collar work, mm -hmm. because generally blue collar workers are overlooked, and the the trade union partnership is the start of that. Does community, the trade union who's supporting you, consider what you're doing a feeder system to to their union? Is that how they're looking at this? Or are they looking at this because they recognize that they are only able to provide a certain number of hours for their workers and they have an interest in making sure that they can supplement um, those contracts with other work or both? Uh, but basically everything, they, they, they kind of look at it and it works in every aspect. So the, 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 there's a gigantic difference between us and some other platforms in the fact that we've built in lots of safeguards. Um, so everyone who works through the platform does it on a self-employed basis. Mm -hmm. yep. But if a business keeps booking the same person, if they book them for four or more times in a period of three months, we actually say, listen, it's fine, but you've got to move them on to a worker contract because the platform isn't geared to getting around employment law. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we've been amazed about is the amount of businesses that do actually offer a, a full contract to the oh, workers. Interesting. There's a 20% temp to perm ratio, which is absolutely mm -hmm. insane. And one of the reasons is we, we charge such a small fee for it. We charge £150 to take someone on permanently. But we've done that to encourage the right form of employment. So we've got one, uh, it was actually featured in the FT, one of those people was taken on permanently in a job that never wanted um, someone to work these odd hours. That's why they used our platform. But they mm -hmm. liked the individual so much, they changed their working practices to fit in the worker. Interesting. Wow, that's that's great. Now, now does, in those cases, do those people still stick with your platform to fill in odd hours or or are they satisfied with getting a permanent position that gives them more hours and therefore more money? Bizarrely, they stick with the platform. I'm sure they um, do. So we, we, we've had since launching, I think we've had something like a 0.8% churn rate mm -hmm. of individuals who have signed up. Hmm. Because it actually requires so little from an individual, so most other things require them looking, searching, applying, everything comes to them from our platform. So people are very happy just to stay and change their availability. Interesting. So, so what is the constraint to igniting your platform? Is it supply of workers or businesses that have these these demands that are variable 
um, and and therefore needing to understand that there's a different solution available to them. In order to grow your platform, what, what do you need more, more workers or more businesses? I mean, clearly you need both, but where are you right now in your evolution? I'm going to be really honest with you. Our biggest problem is our message is too good. <laughs> uh, so we, we we look like one of those dodgy internet ads where you know you can sit on your bottom and get fifty thousand pounds working at home. Right. Because to a business, big and small, we say you can get more staff cheaper, quicker, and there'll be better quality through our platform, and you'll be the good guys because right. we're highly ethical and recommended by trade union. So because we've ticked every single box, it takes a long time to overcome some of the barriers for businesses. Because uh, I don't believe it. I, I can't believe anything can be that good. You, you know, there's got to be a catch. What's the catch? Um, and I'll, I'll give you, for instance, some of the larger companies we've been speaking to for around a year and a half, just to overcome those barriers of there isn't a catch. It, you know, this, this, this is genuine. Um, there is. There are so many people who want to work like this. It's ridiculous. Um, so that's never an issue. Um, it generally costs us around one or two pence um, to wow. sign up an individual wow. um, just because they're queuing, queuing up to. Um, it's, it's just overcoming that. And I, I think as our name gets out more, the, the trust will be built up and the businesses will, will just drop, if that makes sense. Yeah, but yeah. The good thing is our small business penetration, because I don't know what it's like in the US, but in the UK, 66% of all small businesses won't use a recruitment agency or any kind of platform right? Um, because they don't trust them. Well, we are actually bypassing that trust um, deficit because the business can choose the people they like. And, and what we're finding is a lot of the smaller businesses select someone for two hours just to see what they're like. Mm -hmm. They've lost virtually nothing. Right. Um, and if they like them, next next time they book them for seven hours, eight hours on, on a different day. Mm -hmm. So actually, we're overcoming the trust issue by um, yeah by by giving those new tools for businesses to connect. Yeah, you can you can give people the chance to sample, and it's very inexpensive, low risk for them to do that. Yes. How, how important is yeah, completely. The, how important is the union component? to this as you think about expanding beyond your your operating area today i mean cl clearly you want to scale and go beyond the hyper local you know geography where you you are able to serve businesses today is 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 the template to to go throughout the uk and and try to align with a, a trade union or or no very much so. So our, our plan is to be nationwide throughout the UK, hopefully by the end of the year. Wow. So the large corporates who are who are dropping as we speak um, need UK coverage. Mm -hmm. So the idea is we open up one area after another. Um, however, the union is absolutely pivotal to everything we do. Mm -hmm. um, and the biggest reason, and just being really honest with you, is someone with an awful big bag of money is going to the T just because it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and our biggest differentiator is we are the good guys. Yep. Um, we are endorsed by a trade union and we are the good guys. So, yes, someone's copied it. You can get the staff or you can go through us and you can be assured that the people get paid well, they're looked after and we're endorsed by a trade union. So not only can you get the staff you need, you can get some good press off the back of it as well, which, as we all know, in the gig economy, um, it hasn't had a lot of good press lately. Right. Well, so, yeah, and and, and but, you, you do you do need to have the support of the trade unions because you can't have them regard you as trying to steal their workers, right? Completely, com completely. Well, we're not in competition. That's right. the beauty of it. We're actually working in partnership with them, right. not only to get people work but actually to make work better mm -hmm, for everyone mm -hmm. to make work work for everyone mm -hmm. that's what we say how do you how do you pay your your workers are you are you actually taking care of the disbursement uh, to their bank account or or how, how how does that part of your business work one of the aspects in all of this is trust so bar the large large businesses which pay on account 
the smaller businesses all pay up front via debit or credit card. Yep. We then hold the money in an escrow account. And when the booking is finished, it gets transferred to the individual. Mm-hmm. And the reason why we do that is um, there are a lot of platforms in the UK that can decide not to pay a worker if their work is not deemed good enough. Oh, interesting. And we've taken the stance that people will always get paid Mm -hmm. unless they haven't turned up or Mm -hmm. they've turned up drunk and they're endangering life (laughs) or limb. Um, And that's a commitment we've made. Um, And, you you know, I'm sure that's put off some business users, but in general, business users seem to understand that. And the fact they can book some for two hours, you know, that's, that lowers the risk, if that makes sense. Well, well, it, it does, and it's it's pretty important to getting supply of workers to your platform because they know that the risk of being stiffed, is, unless they do something egregious, as you just described, is very low. And so that's a pretty smart it's a pretty smart move in order to you know get your capacity where you need it to be. How do most people like being paid? Do they have it direct direct to their bank account or all direct to bank account? Got it. Interesting. All, all straight into bank accounts. And do you vet um, or screen workers to your platform? What, what is what is that process like? So they have to upload their eligibility to work documents mm-hmm. to prove that they're legally allowed to work in the UK. And then we've developed something called Pathways, where individuals can choose uh, to train themselves in a particular area online and go through a particular pathway. Hmm. So... The, the care industry is a great example. So you can go on the pathway and you're eligible for loads of different work, but you wouldn't be eligible to go in, into caring into someone's home. Mm-hmm. So you can choose to put yourself through the pathway where there's a bit more screening, there's some training involved, there's there's some well, there's, there's a lot more involved. Mm-hmm. But at the end of it, not only can you go and deliver a pizza, but you can go and do some care work. Mm-hmm. Now, that works for a, a whole variety of different industries. Sure. So, for instance, we, we, we've got one where people can be insured to actually do delivery driving once they've gone through the pathway. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are one of the few gig well, – well, we're not a gig platform, but we're one of the few platforms where – anyone who goes to work in the correct area is properly insured, and we can guarantee that. Hmm. Um, But we don't force anyone to, Mm -hmm. and that's really important. Mm -hmm. Um, So someone can come on, and they can do any work they wish, and they can choose to go down certain areas. And because we get so, so many people who want to use the platform, in general, the pathway system always works. Now, now you make your money when the business – um, takes a worker and puts them to work, right? That the the worker doesn't pay a fee to become part of your platform, or or, or do they? I'm just trying to get a sense of completely. The, okay, so so that yep. so, so no, the you, you, you've yeah. hit the nail on the head. Yep. So the economics are from the business, um, not from the worker. Yep. Always. Wow. Always. Interesting business. I you, you you've really engineered a, a very clever platform and put you know, some interesting governance rules in place. I mean, your pathways, I think, are ways to create a, a little bit of certainty from the business perspective um, about the qualifications, if you will, of, of the worker, or at least their um, their likes, their training, and their and their preferences. Um, you know, you're you're putting an economic model in place that that gets a steady supply of workers onto your platform, you're giving businesses the chance to take advantage of of what you offer in, you know, little bite size hours at a time and you're getting, you know, getting unions to uh to get behind you, which is which is pretty important. Really clever. What gave you the idea? You said at the beginning because you you worked in the supermarket and you saw this firsthand, but is that was that really the genesis of the idea to build the business? I when I was twenty one I started a catering company. Mm-hmm that cooked lobster and steak and delivered it to people's houses, freshly cooked. Sounds delicious. And on a Friday and Saturday, we could never, ever find enough delivery drivers. Right. We ended up using my wife's friend's <laughs> husband's goldfish, <laughs> dog, anyone we could find. Um, and and uh, for the fate, I, I generally then did go on to manage a national supermarket. And the guy's name was Steve. And he came to me with tears in his eyes and he said, I can't afford to buy my daughter a pair of school shoes, 
I need more hours. I desperately need more hours. And I said, I'm really sorry, Steve. Your contract is controlled by head office. Why don't you get another job? And it was his words that kind of stuck with me. I can't get another job because my hours change here weekly. It's impossible to get them. And I connected the two in my head. I connected how desperately I needed staff to how desperately Steve needed to work. And then I kind of thought, what's stopping those people from connecting? Why, why, can't, that, why can't a business like I had access Steve? Um, and then we designed the platform to remove all the barriers that stop Steve and the business connecting. Wow. It's, uh, these, these businesses, as, I, as I'm sure you know, having, having lived through it to build one, are the hardest businesses to get off the ground. Uh, um, they have incredible, yeah. uh, incredible staying power um, and, and barriers to entry once you get critical mass on both sides. But they're, they're really challenging. What was the biggest challenge you faced in getting to where you are today? The single biggest challenge, being honest, was probably the very initial stages, access to capital right. and getting people um, infused by it. Right. Um, there's so much noise in in the work marketplace by other companies who are doing things bad, or well, not necessarily bad, but I, I, I personally think they're bad. And to make people realize you can do something where it can be a win for everyone, um, that was really tough, actually. That was really, really tough. And I, I wasn't joking when I said some of the unions wrote back with swear words. I'm sure. That was generally I'm sure. their, their thoughts. Um, so once we got past those stages, um, yeah, it, it's, it, it seems to be getting easier on a weekly basis. Yeah. Well, well, Jonathan, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoy getting to... To, to learn about the business and um, and how you got to where you are today. It sounds like 2019 is going to be a great year for you. Continued best uh, best of luck and uh, hope, hope to catch up with you again later in the year to monitor your progress, see how you're doing. Great stuff. Thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye now.